This man stole my identity at Texas Furry Fiesta, multiple stolen fursuits, and these memes I stole about two furry conventions last weekend. Hey, Nuss Hyena here, and today's video is about stealing in furry. How common is it? What can we do about it? And how can you avoid being stolen? Nuss Hyena investigates. Yay! So last week I was at Texas Furry Fiesta in Dallas, Texas, and I was helping a friend run some errands around town when one of my best friends informed me that there was this guy going around the convention who had stolen my identity. He had a printout of my fursuit head and was wearing it around the convention. Was it part of some kind of cosplay? I guess. So my initial reaction was, I don't know how to feel about this. On the plus side, he's promoting the brand. We love to see that. But in general, impersonating someone else's persona is weird. Personas are idealized versions of our personalities, and for many furries, their persona is themselves. So going around posing as someone's persona is highly frowned upon even if it's part of a joke. Now I understand this gentleman wanted to do this to pose as a more well-known furry, and I think I can say that about myself given how many people have seen my silly memes over the years. But in general, please don't do this to furries. No one can technically stop you, but if you're trying to make connections in this community, this ain't it, chief. Am I keeping up with the Zoomers? So I was puzzled by this, slightly amused, but then I looked into the old Twitter account. And look, I'm not trying to give this person too hard of a time. I can see that they are trying to improve as a person. But when I find your tweet history and it seems to reflect problematic opinions for a community that is very queer and has a lot of trans and non-binary people, that is not a good way to build goodwill. Okay, here's where it gets a little weird because it's definitely not weird already, right? I heard this person was asking everyone, literally everyone, including my friends, where I was, and I just like to remind y'all that like, furries who make content are people too. And it is a little bit on the creepy side when somebody is asking everyone where someone is. Like, I'm at the con, I'll be around the con, and I don't want to be put on this pedestal where people have to like, meet me and make their con about meeting me. That's weird. Don't do that, please. And I would have cut you more slack except I heard that you were going around harassing fursuiters as a cop cosplay. Now, by the way, I should mention that this person has apologized to me. I do accept your apology. Please work on yourself, okay? Now, let me tell you this. I do understand what this person is going for. They are a furry. They want to interact with fursuiters. They want a way to bridge that gap because they probably don't have a fursuit. But let me educate y'all on something that doesn't make our community very comfortable. Posing as law enforcement, even through a cosplay at a furry convention, is always going to be a mixed bag. Furry includes a lot of groups that do not have the best interactions with law enforcement based on discrimination and police brutality. And one of your cosplays, which, by the way, I liked less than the TF2 <laughs> fake furry one, was I heard you were going around as some kind of cop telling fursuiters hugging is against the law, bend over. Now, uh, bro, that's highly inappropriate, okay? I get you're learning the rules of, of social conduct, and I'm sure you will take this to heart and switch up your style next year, but you're dressing in a way that makes some people uncomfortable. You're approaching fursuiters in a way that definitely makes them uncomfortable. I'm sure some folks don't mind and will play along, but when we are fursuiting, we don't need fursuiter cops, okay? <laughs> As queer folks, as weird folks, we already feel policed in our day-to-day -day lives, okay? We don't need to bring that into a furry convention. Now, once again, no one can really stop you from doing it unless you're being, like, super obnoxious. Which, okay, maybe you weren't it. But unless somebody complains and brings it up to the con staff, you can dress and conduct yourself in a way that you want. But if you're trying to make inroads and connections in furry and conduct yourself in a way that people will like what you're doing, maybe lose the cop shtick, okay? And once again, I accept your apology, I hope you take this to heart. I am making this because I think you will take this to heart, because you are listening to what I'm saying, so... Obviously, blanking out the names, and... <laughs> Look, once again, people found the TF2 thing funny, just stop. Don't do that to anyone else, okay? Please. <laughs> but here's where your cop cosplay really irked me. I heard directly from a friend that they told you to stop, and then instead of just leaving the area, you 
lightly punch them in the fursuit head. That is completely unacceptable behavior, bro. You cannot do that, okay? I know it was light, but do not put hands on someone in an aggressive manner like that. That is so unbelievably unacceptable, okay? I hope you take this to heart. I think you've got some creativity in you. I think you obviously want to perform and entertain people at convention, but this is not the way to go about it, okay? If people don't like your shtick, move on. Do not put a hand on someone, even if it's in a joking way. You don't jokingly punch a fursuiter, okay? It was just really, really bad. And this was the reason why I did not want to talk to you, because I heard about that, and now I don't want to take a picture with you, okay? If you work on yourself, maybe I will next TFF, okay? And I do want to talk about it, because honestly, <laughs> I'll give you credit. I got asked about this a bunch at the convention, so... There is your five seconds of YouTube attention, pal. <laughs> so while my identity got stolen at Texas Furry Fiesta, something else got stolen at Fernal Equinox. The show got stolen. <laughs> Alright, this video is about Milkshake Duck. If you don't know what Milkshake Duck is, it's all about, hey, this is something neat happening. Oh wait, and they're terrible. So somebody at Fernal Equinox in Toronto, Canada, really stole the show on Twitter last week but definitely for all the wrong reasons. Dubbed Weenie Ballerini, this mystery person was at the dances and then was photographed doing this acrobatic stunt while completely disrobed. So this is obviously completely unacceptable behavior, the disrobing part. If you want to dance at a rave, please wear appropriate attire. Please listen to the con rules and please listen to instructions from the con staff. So I hope I can discuss this incident with the nuance of there was a funny meme about it, but the behavior was highly problematic. And what was problematic about it? People aren't consenting to your nudity, okay? If you strip completely naked, no one's consenting to that. And I don't know the specifics of the incident, but I did hear that this person got banned. I mean, that makes sense. I heard it was a nightmare for the staff to deal with, Apparently they did a very good job distracting the rest of the dancers from the incident. They surrounded this person to shield everyone else from view of naked dancer. And I think it is amusing to think about just because it's so absurd. You think about your nightly rave and then you see a naked person doing something acrobatic. There is something inherently humorous about it. I hope you're not offended by me saying that, but please don't do this, okay? There was a time and a place for showing off your buddy, and in a public setting like this, this is definitely not it. So yes, this dancer did steal the show. And I think part of the reason why this meme took off is because there was a security incident at Fernal Equinox, and I think something light-hearted was bound to take over. Unfortunately, it involved someone who was behaving problematically. Potentially, there are some substances involved, but once again, this is all pure speculation. I don't know all the facts or details about this. Good dancing, poor public conduct. To anyone watching this who is new <laughs> to furry, please follow the rules of the convention that you're attending. Pulling a stunt like this will get you banned. And I don't know what happened of this mysterious dancer, but it's possible they could be facing charges. Now, other furry con behavior that could involve charges? is the theft of personal items. Sadly, it is way too common to hear stories about people who got prized possessions, get stolen, and whether it's clothes, art, merch, electronics. And it's happened to me too, when we threw a sweet party at Anthrocon, shout out to the Weston for that free upgrade, appreciate y'all, I had my night light stolen. <laughs> Just a $3 LED night light that was sitting in the bathroom, somebody who was probably drunk decided to pocket it and take it for themselves. Is it replaceable? Yes, but that is an insight into the mindset of some people at furry cons, unfortunately. It's unfortunate I have to even say this, but watch your stuff. And that's the PSA. And talking about stuff you need to watch in furry, oh my gosh, please keep an eye on your fursuits when you're out and about with them. There have been too many cases of entire fursuits or fursuit heads, virtually irreplaceable items being stolen by other furries and by people outside of the community, sadly. In fact, I think there were at least two incidents last weekend of fursuit heads getting stolen. This is really, really bad. Your fursuit head essentially is your baby, and like a baby around a pool, 
you gotta keep eyes on it all the time. I just think furry has grown so much over the years that maybe at a certain point you could have just left your fursuit head in a lounge, gone away for 20 minutes and then come back. But as furry has exploded in size so well naturally, the number of problematic people and I think we have to realize now, just because we're in a furry space does not mean that all of our stuff is safe. This is the sad reality. And if you can do one thing for your fellow furries when you are in a fursuit lounge, be vigilant for other furries. Be aware of whose head belongs to who. And if somebody goes up to a fursuit head that doesn't look like the owner, call them out. Furry has really grown and thrived because we have looked out for each other. And I think when it comes to the safety of these prized possessions, fursuits, we definitely have to be vigilant. Let's really, really be vigilant in future, okay? Now, you don't have to be away from the house to have your stuff stolen and furry. I'm, of course, talking about art theft. This is much more of a beginner fur slash young fur move. Now, if your goal in furry is to make friends and build goodwill, stealing somebody else's art that they commission with their own money for their own personal character is not the way to go about it. We do see this all the time because people take the same mindset as Steam or Facebook where they think, what's my profile pic gonna be? And they just Google image something and then set it as that. In furry, it's not that straightforward. Everybody's fursona is extremely personal, it's their own character, an extension of themselves, or literally even themselves, depending on who you talk to. So stealing someone else's art and setting it as your profile picture is the Facebook equivalent of taking someone you know and then setting them as your profile picture. It's kind of weird and definitely frowned upon. Now often people do this because they don't know any better, but stealing art is an instant way to get in the bad books with people. And on the topic of stealing someone's personal character, we can't have this video without talking about rip-off fursuits. Now this topic has been covered at length, but I am also here to say don't buy a knockoff fursuit. These commercial mascot makers will list completed fursuits from famous makers and pass them off as their own. Now what's going to happen is if you order one of these fursuits, you're not going to get anything that looks like that character. You're going to get a very derpy looking version of it, and you're essentially going to have a cheap ripoff of someone else's fursuit. Now this is highly, highly frowned upon in furry. Famous people have pulled this move and it has not gone over well. And I do believe some people buy these fursuits without knowing that it's actually a rip-off of somebody's character. They're just not informed enough. You're not going to make inroads socially if you are ripping off someone's character and commissioning fursuits made to look like an existing fursuit and known character. So if you don't want to come up as a thief and furry, even accidentally, what you should do is design your own character. Or, if you don't know how to design a character, pick up a adoptable. So people do sell these adoptable characters. If you like the design, you can claim that for yourself. Or if you have the budget for a partial fursuit, that's always a good way to start because you can just go to the den and pick one up. You can go to the dealer's den, the online auction site, and buy one. Obviously be cautious because it's online transactions. Or you can go the good old fashioned route and commission an artist to create you a ref sheet. And from that ref sheet you can get all the art of your fursona that you could ever want. So yes, this video has been about stealing in furry. I hope you have enjoyed the commentary. I hope you found it informative, entertaining, funny at points. And this was the first video of 2023. Now if you've been watching my content for the last six years or anything shorter than that, you will have noticed that I haven't taken this long of a break from uploading. This is my first post of the year, almost three entire months into 2023. But what I'm doing with this channel is I am switching it up. You're going to see a little bit more VTuber stuff because it is easier to edit and create in my current circumstances. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to do my classic fursuit stuff. Just stay tuned because this hyena is back in action. I think I'm bringing the bestest vibes. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Shout out to my super secret patrons. My name is Nas Hyena and I will catch you next time. Hey!